Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss the folate antagonists. Folate antagonists can also be called as antifolates, which can be classified into two types: type 1 antifolates as well as type 2 antifolates. Type 1 antifolates are going to inhibit the folic acid synthesis, whereas type 2 antifolates are going to be inhibit the folic acid utilization. So today in this video, we are going to see the different types of antifolates, how they are acting and what are the examples in each category. First of all, we have to see any difference between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes like the bacteria can synthesize the folic acid, whereas in the eukaryotes like the mammalian cells and protozoa, folic acid is not synthesized. Then which is an advanced organism, whether the prokaryotes or eukaryotes? Definitely we know that eukaryotes are highly organized and more advanced compared with the prokaryotes. For eukaryotes, there is no need to synthesize the folic acid because the folic acid can easily transport it through the cell membrane. But in the prokaryotes, the folic acid cannot be transported because there is no transport system for the folic acid. So they have to synthesize the folic acid within the cell, which makes a point of difference between the prokaryotes and eukaryotes in the synthesis of the folic acid. So now let us see the folic acid since in the bacteria. Suppose this is a bacterial cell. Already we have seen that folic acid cannot cross this bacterial cell because there is no transport system developed in the bacteria. So folic acid should be synthesized within the bacterial cell. And for this folic acid, PABA acts as a precursor. PABA is nothing but the para amino benzoic acid. Folic acid cannot be transported through the cell membrane. But the PABA can be easily crossed through this bacterial cell membrane. So PABA can enter into the bacterial cell which can act as a precursor for the sins of the folic acid. Now the PABA can be combined with the another component that is the DHPP, dihydroteridine pyrophosphate, which is the another component required for the folic acid synthesis. And the coupling reaction between these two components is mediated by one of the important enzyme DHPS, dihydroteriate synthase enzyme. So in presence of DHPS, the dihydroteridine pyrophosphate can combine with the PABA so that it can produce one of the important intermediate dihydroteriate. So still in this first step, the folic acid is not directly synthesized. Dihydroteriate is going to be synthesized and still it requires the glutamate residues in order to be converted into folic acid derivative. Now the glutamate molecules can combine with this dihydroteriate and this step is mediated by another enzyme DHFS dihydrofolate synthase enzyme. So in presence of DHFS, the glutamate molecules can combine with the dihydroteriates so that they are going to be converted into dihydrofolate DHF. So this is the second step in the folic acid synthesis where the dihydrofolate is going to be formed within the bacteria. This dihydrofolate is further reduced by another enzyme dihydrofolate reductase enzyme where it is going to be converted into tetrahydrofolate THF. This tetrahydrofolate is the active form of the folic acid which can be involved in the synthesis of the various components like the thymidine, methionine as well as the purines. In this way folic acid is essential for the thymidine synthesis which is incorporated in the DNA as well as the methionine and purines can be synthesized from the folic acid. For all of these, the bacteria requires the PABA as the precursor this PABA can be obtained from the outside as well as PABA can also be obtained from the de novo synthesis within the bacteria. In this way, the bacteria can synthesize the folic acid from the PABA by use of the one of the important enzyme, dihydroteriate synthase enzyme. So here you can observe the three important steps. So first step is mediated by the enzyme DHPS, dihydroteriate synthase enzyme, which converts the PABA into dihydroteriate. And second step is mediated by DHFS, dihydrofolate synthase enzyme which converts the dihydroteriate into dihydrofolate and third step is the reduction of the dihydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate mediated by dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. So these are the three important steps within the bacteria and on the first and third steps we have the drugs are going to act and inhibit the folic acid synthesis and its reduction. Now let us the folic acid utilization in the eukaryotes. Already we have discussed that eukaryotes will not synthesize because they can get the folic acid from the diet. So suppose this is a eukaryotic cell. So folic acid which is present as a folate. So this folate can cross the cell membrane of the eukaryotes because of the specialized transport system. 
and once this folate is present within the cell of eukaryotes then it can be reduced by one of the important enzyme dihydrofolate reductase enzyme this is just like in the bacteria but here this folate is initially converted into dihydrofolate by this dihydrofolate reductase enzyme again the same enzyme is going to act on the dihydrofolate so that it is going to be converted into tetrahydrofolate so again in the eukaryotes the tetrahydrofolate is the active form of this uh, folic acid now this tetrahydrofolate can be utilized for the synthesis of the thymidine which is involved in the dna synthesis methionine as well as the purines so utilization of the folic acid is somewhat similar to the process within the bacteria so again we have few other drug targets acting on the mammalian dihydrofolate reductase enzyme thereby they inhibits the folic acid utilization within the mammalian cells and they can be used as anti cancer agents so we have one of the drug methotrexate which is going to inhibit this dihydrofolate reductase enzyme within the mammalian cells thereby inhibits the folic acid utilization within the mammalian cells now let us the structure of the folic acid so this is the structure of the folic acid which can be split into three parts if you see the heterocyclic ring system it is having the pteridine ring system so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so this is the numbering for this pteridine ring system and this pteridine ring system is attached with uh, another important component this is nothing but the para amino benzoic acid so this para amino benzoic acid is going to be attached to the sixth position of the pteridine ring system through the methylene group and finally we can observe at the terminal one of the amino acid this is nothing but the glutamate so folic acid is having a glutamate residue which can be polymerized to produce a polyglutamate form in this way folic acid is made up of three components pteridine paba and glutamate now one of the important component in the folic acid since is the dhpp which is nothing but the dihydropteridine pyrophosphate you can observe a pyrophosphate bond here which is going to be removed and para amino benzoic acid is going to be combined so this is the first step in the folic acid synthesis within the bacteria which is mediated by one of the enzyme dhps dihydroteriate synthase enzyme so in presence of this enzyme the paba can be combined with the dhpp to produce the dihydroteriate then the next step is the conversion of the dihydroteriate into the dihydrofolate so here this is a second step which is mediated by one of the enzyme dhfs dihydrofolate synthase enzyme at this step the glutamate is going to be added so that this dihydroteriate is going to be converted into dihydrofolate you can observe that here the glutamate molecule is going to be added so that dihydroteriate is going to be converted into dihydrofolate so this is the second step now let us see the third step so third step is the reduction of the dihydrofolate so here our focus on the pteridine ring system so we have shown the rest of the part with a group r group now this dihydrofolate can be reduced by one of the enzyme which is the third step to tetrahydrofolate you can see that not only seventh and eighth position the fifth and sixth positions are also saturated so this is 5 6 7 8 tetrahydrofolate so this is a simply called as tetrahydrofolate and this step is mediated by one of the enzyme dhfr dihydrofolate reductase enzyme but in order to reduce the dihydrofolate we have to supply the hydrogens and here one of the cofactor is the nadph2 which acts as a supplier of the hydrogens and nadph2 is going to be converted into nadp plus so in this way dihydrofolate reductase enzyme will reduce the dihydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate but the same enzyme is also responsible for the conversion of the folate into dihydrofolate as well as dihydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate within the mammalian cells so now let us see the type 1 antifolate that means the antifolates which are going to inhibit the folic acid synthesis within the bacteria so one type of drugs are the sulfonamides so sulfonamides are the type 1 antifolate which are having the common structure like this you can see here they are having the para amino benzene sulfonamide moiety and if you compare the structure with the paba para amino benzoic acid you can see there some structural similarity between the sulfonamides as well as the paba sulfonamides are having the para amino benzene sulfonyl group and paba is having the para amino benzoyl group both are somewhat similar because of the similarity in the structure sulfonamides can compete with the paba thereby inhibit the folic acid synthesis now the paba can be combined with the dihydropteridine pyrophosphate 
in presence of the enzyme dihydroteriate synthase enzyme dhps so power molecule can bind to this dhps as well as dihydroteridine pyrophosphate can be combined where the pyrophosphate group is going to be removed so that this complex is going to be converted into dihydroteriate but here sulfonamides can inhibit this synthesis by competitively acting with the PABA. Because of the structural similarities, sulfonamides are having a competition for binding to this dihydroteriate synthase enzyme. Because of the structural similarities, sulfonamides can compete with the PABA for the enzyme DHPS. So sulfonamides can bind to this DHPS enzyme, thereby they can inhibit this enzyme. So that PABA cannot bind to this DHPS and it is not converted into dihydroteriate. In this way, sulfonamides are acting competitively with the PABA, thereby inhibits the synthesis of the folic acid. So we have the different types of sulfonamides like the sulfamethoxazole, sulfisoxazole, sulfadiazine, sulfapyridine, sulfalene, sulfacelazine, sulfaestamide, sulfadoxine. So many sulfa drugs are there which are having a prefix sulfa. And we have another drug Dapsone which is also acting in a similar way but it is not a sulfonamide, it is a sulfone. Dapsone is one of an anti-lepral agent working by same mechanism. Similarly, another antibacterial agent is the mefinide. Mefinide is a non-true sulfonamide that means it is not a sulfonamide structurally but acts like sulfonamides that means it is going to inhibit the folic acid synthesis within the bacteria. So these are the three important drug targets acting on the folic acid synthesis, sulfonamides, dapsone and mefinide. Now let's see the type 2 antifolates. These are the drugs which are going to inhibit the utilization of the folic acid. That means these drugs are going to inhibit the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme, thereby they are going to inhibit the reduction of the folic acid. One of the important drugs is that trimethoprim. In the trimethoprim, you can observe one of the heterocyclic ring. This is nothing but that. 2,4-diaminopyrimidine. Similarly, another drug is the pyrimethamine. Again, in the pyrimethamine, you can observe the 2,4-diamino ring system. And third one is the methotrexate. Methotrexate is having the pteridine ring system. But if we carefully observe, we can see that 2,4-diaminopyrimidine ring system, which is fused with the pyrazine. So, methotrexate is again having the 2,4-diaminopyrimidine ring system. And particularly this ring 2,4-diaminopyrimidine is responsible for the binding to the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. So the type 2 antifolates, the first drug is the trimethoprim. This trimethoprim inhibits the DHFR dihydrofolate reductase enzyme particularly in the bacteria. So trimethoprim is useful as antibacterial acid. Similarly other drugs like the pyrimethamine and, and another drug is the proguanil. These two drugs are selective for the protozoal dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. So that's why these two drugs are useful as anti-malarial agents. Similarly, methotrexate is selective for the mammalian dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. Thereby, methotrexate acts as an anti-cancer agent. In this way, even these drugs are going to acting on the same target, but their selectivity is somewhat different. Trimethoprim is selective for the bacteria. Pyrimethamine and proguanil is selective for the protozoa, particularly malarial protozoa. And methotrexate is selective for the mammalian cells. Cotrimoxazole. And we have one of the combination of uh, type 1 antifolates as well as type 2 antifolates. So one such combination is the sulfamethoxazole plus trimethoprim. This combination is an antibacterial combination. These two drugs can be combined in the ratio of 5 is to 1. That is a 5 parts of the sulfamethoxazole and one part of the trimethoprim in order to inhibit the synthesis of the folic acid as well as its uh, reduction. And this combination can be used in the treatment of urinary tract infections as well as uh, to treat the pneumonia particularly in the immunocompromised patients like uh, HIV patients, cotrimoxazole can be used. So that's about the folate antagonists which can be classified into type 1 and type 2. Type 1 are mainly inhibiting the folic acid synthesis whereas type 2 are going to inhibit the folic acid utilization. Sulfonamides, dapsone and mefinide are the three important drug targets which are going to inhibit the folic acid synthesis in the bacteria. Whereas type 2 antifolates are mainly inhibiting the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. Based on that we have three types of drugs. Trimethoprim is an antibacterial, pyrimethamine and proguanil are the anti-malarials, whereas methotrexate is the anti-cancer agent. So that's for today. 
Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.